guys, it's Jill and welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you are new here, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications even though we all know it doesn't do anything. Maybe it'll notify you three days later. Anyway, so today this video is going to be a little bit of a different one and it's not an easy one to make because, you know, I feel like I've explained it so many different places at this point that I'm like, ah. by the time this goes up, there should be a podcast episode up, Equithery Podcast. You can listen to it on Spotify, Pandora, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts all of those good places so be sure to check that out it should be up by now and that will probably give you a more comprehensive view of my thought process through all of this if you are interested because this was not an easy decision for me to make but I did eventually come around to the conclusion that Zoe needs surgery and this video is going to be taking you guys along through that probably the beginning process and hopefully we can get Zoe better Ooh, stress <laughs> So for those of you that don't know, Zoe was diagnosed on May 8th, 2020 with kissing spine. Low in their back, they have their vertebrae on their spine and then they have these dorsal processes that come up. And what happens is they start kind of like a suspension bridge if you picture it like this way. And then over time, they kind of do this. The caveat to kissing spine is it is also hereditary. But my thing is that if I hadn't started her so young and ridden her incorrectly, you know, I really feel like I did her a disservice. She's always been, the hot spicy mare and every trainer I ever rode under was always like you need to add more leg you need to use less leg you need to hold your reins in a bridge you need to use this bit or change your position blah 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 like there were all of these different suggestions but not a one nobody ever suggested that something might be wrong with her they just slapped the hot mare label on it and ran with it in a more progressive feminist universe why are we running on the gender as the reason that my horse is exhibiting these unwanted symptoms. That frustration aside, finally when I moved out here and I was on my own and Zoe was recovering from colic surgery, I thought about it more and when I started bringing her back into work after the colic surgery and after I switched to more positive reinforcement based methods and I still wasn't like, when I would ride her she was still so off. On the ground she was completely different. She was still a bit grouchy to trot or move forward but I couldn't figure out what the missing link was and then one day when I was riding her she kept switching leads behind and I was like okay maybe it's her hawks. So we took her to my vet and did all the things and they decided to inject her hawks. When I rode her after that there was no change. As it turns out that was a side effect of the kissing spine. You know if you think about it and she's traveling inverted her hawks are being put under undue pressure because of the way she's traveling. She's not traveling correctly, putting more weight on them, stressing them and then the fusing happens. And you know I rode and competed Zoe from a three-year-old to I think eight was when I stopped competing her. So, I mean, we went from starter to training level. And if this isn't a testament to please give your horse time to grow up, their backs don't set until they are six years old. And I'm not saying to wait until six until you start backing your horses, but please, dear God, don't do jumping and like, you know, hardcore work with them when they are below four at least. Let their joints grow and develop and then you might have a horse that lasts 20 years instead of 10. That spiel aside, you know, we injected her hawks. There was no change. She was still really tight in her back. She wouldn't soften over her top line and I was like, I don't know what's going on. Thought of kissing spine had occurred to me, but I wasn't like set on it. And then I posted something on Twitter about it and somebody messaged me and was like, have you ever looked into kissing spine? And I was like, that was all I needed. Now I'm gonna do that. So I called the vet back out, x-rayed her and I'll insert her x-rays here. Yeah, so all of that to say, we went the conservative route and I was like, okay, let's re-x-ray her and see what her back looks like now. We called another vet out to, just to get a second opinion and see what you know he thought about it. Two birds with one stone. And at the same time, we x-rayed her hawks and that's where we got the hawk x-rays as well. I'll insert a picture of the x-rays and you can see hamburger patty looking things. are supposed to be separated by a joint and they're fusing on one side, which we found out this year when we did her kissing spine x-rays again. We discovered that that there was literally no change in her x-rays. But now I'm like, okay. <laughs> 
I don't know what to do. Initially, I threw my hands in the air and I was like, we're not doing this. I can't do the surgery. I'm not gonna put her through another one. She already went through the colic surgery because the grain we were feeding her at that barn was asinine. I mean, it was like straight sweet feed, which horses should not have a high NSC, non-structural carbohydrate food in their diet. And uh, oh my God, it was so bad. Uh, that contributed to her ulcers, probably the way I was riding her, the pain she was under. She didn't have much room to get out and move around. She just had like a small run out. So she was just under a lot of stress. She wasn't being managed or fed properly. You know, I've learned all of this in the past two years. So there was nothing I could do at the time. I wish I had looked into things more instead of just like blindly trusting people that I thought were professionals. Not to talk down about them. They only know what they know, but I think it's important as horse owners, trainers, riders, wherever you fall, in the horse world, it's your responsibility if you are caring for an animal to keep up with research and stay with it so that you can, you know, do the best you can by your animals. Anyway, lesson learned there. Initially, after seeing those x-rays, I was like, I am not putting her through another surgery. You know, she, I just won't ride her, you know, do stuff on the ground. Over the last month, I've really taken a lot of time to think about it. And so now here we are. I've decided to go ahead with the surgery. I, I don't want to risk shortening her life by basically sentencing her to a life of chronic pain that will only get worse because she's already symptomatic. You know, it's just not something I really think I can live with. I think it is in the best interest of her welfare to do it. And so that's what my vets seem to agree with and everybody else that I've talked to. It seems like the kissing spine surgery has a really high success rate. So all of that combined, I finally called last week and set up an appointment at Texas Equine Hospital to take Zoe down on April 16th, which is this coming Friday. I am filming this on a Tuesday. I'm taking her down on Thursday and her surgery will be on Friday. I'm gonna bring you guys along on the process. Usually they allow you to watch the surgery there, but due to COVID, I will not be able to, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to catch some footage of that. That would have been cool. And she's supposed to stay there for a couple days after and then I can pick her up and bring her home and she'll be on stall rest, but I will have have more information on the whole like aftercare picture after her surgery. That's kind of where we are right now. I hope that you guys can uh, appreciate my decision and understand it. This will mean that I will be able to ride her again, but I am never gonna jump her again with her hawks fusing. So the situation on that, from my understanding at the moment, I haven't done as much research as I'd like to on it because my focus has been on her back. While they're fusing, they're quite arthritic and sore. After the hawks fuse, then from my understanding, they're not painful anymore because they the joint has fused and those two like little hamburger patty type things become one and then they're good the caveat is that they lose mobility and range of motion there and i don't think it's fair to her to have to go through jumping and like yes dressage and flat work involves hind end engagement and will put pressure on them but it's not near the same as jumping is and you know my opinion may change on this in the future but for the health of her back she will be in a flat work program the new farm that we're moving to has tons of trails so my little arena pony is gonna have to learn how to go relax on trails and I've got a plan for how to do that systematically and work up to it and all that good stuff but yeah it's all gonna be a different world for me and Zoe when I bring her back into work I'm gonna take the time to do things right and basically restart her teach her in a way that's comfortable for her and is empathetic to the stress and trauma that I've put her through before and you know hopefully help have a happy, healthy, confident horse again. So that is the intro to this video. And now I guess I will be taking you guys along with me to the vet. But do know that the blog post is linked down below for the entire story. And I will also link the podcast down below as well. So be sure to check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next second for you, but days for me. So. So it is the next day and I am standing in my trailer because I've got to get some stuff out of here that'll fall over or whatever. And then I've got to prep the back to put Zoe in. So um, I'm just bringing you guys along the list part. It may not be the neatest, but this is where she's going. And I've got her some alfalfa here and the hay bags stored up there. It's shoved in there, it's not going anywhere. It wasn't even that much. I'm just lazy now. Oh, we're gonna pack a feed though. So we are in our feed room now and I am getting ready to make up Zoe's feed. I've got an extra Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I don't know when she's coming home, so better safe than sorry. I am gonna fill those up with a scoop of that. One down, like 15 more to go.
just occurred to me that it's been a long time since I talked about what Zoe gets in her food. So I figured I would go through it now. It's very simple. We use the Blue Bonnet Intensify X Factor in the orange there. It's a really low sugar, low starch, low NSC, non-structural carbohydrate grain. And she just gets a scoop of it. Honestly, she could probably cut back, but I am anticipating some weight loss from the surgery because of the stress. I'm going to do everything I can to make it less stressful, but you know, it's surgery. Anyway, so these are all of the bags. And now I'm going to put some flax in her AM feed, salt in her PM. So, stay tuned. Should have been better to start with, but. Done. Now I have got her wraps, her pillows, fly mask, and halter all out and ready to go. So I can just wrap her in the cross ties when she gets done eating breakfast and we'll be all set. Good morning, everyone. I have packed the truck and I just lined it up. Got it on my first go. That's always my favorite thing in the entire world. And now we're lowering. Nikki's neck on to the train. Oh, about to make contact here. Sweet. We are hooked up and ready for liftoff. My mom is on her way here. She will be my co-pilot because she's not allowed to drive the trailer anymore. Um, <laughs> I am about to go get Zoe, but I'm just kind of taking a minute here because I'm like, Ugh! this morning I woke up and I'm like, so many second thoughts. And I know I'm doing the right thing, but it's, it's so scary. Ugh. Surgery number two. Ah! Well, see now this just feels mean. <laughs> Hi ladies. Okay. Hi Lex. What's up, pretty? So bird. Hi Amber. Sweet girl. Hi, lovey. Oh. Sorry to wake ya. Hi. Sweet girl. Good morning. I'm clicking and treating her for just standing here because sometimes she gets a little bit worked up you know, being taken away from everybody and it's early. I've been working on it with her for the past couple of days and she's been really good but I just want it to be a low stress experience. Just keep her nice and calm. Nice little I think the boys across the way scared her, which scared me. And some dirt in your belly button. I rather think she looks good in blue. <laughs> I just offered her um, some alfalfa pellets and she politely declined by shoving her neck at me. Bending it this way, she's like, "Who's stretching, human?" Oh. 
pulled out some hay for her. We're at a gas station and about to get back on the road. I think we have about two hours left. Ugh, we're almost there. We here. Nice, nice. Oh, stressy stress. Verb is all settled. Hi, kiddo. Hi. It's raining. Real nice. But she's here. Okay, friends and family folk, it is the next day. Say hello, Deb. Hello. We need to come to TJ Maxx to kill some time, and we got a text that Ozo Bird is up and awake, and we're here to get All righty. Here the burb. Hi, lovey. You can't find snacks? You think you gotta wake up a little bit more before you can have foods. Good it. This is what we're working with up here. Hi, lovey. Is that towel sewed on? Oh, birdie bird. You look like you got a bath before. Poor kiddo. Oh, shaky. Oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> this is burb. She's a little drunk and sleepy. They're very cuddly. She's so bad. I had to remove a bunch of ear mice from her ears. They keep coming back and we can't keep them out. So her ears are all eaten up. It's quite a rough day. We get some food in them. 